Hey there everyone, it's Matt, and today I'm reviewing a 2012 Toyota Prius. This is the classic, this is the one that's been around forever, this is one that's had a redesign recently, and this model specifically is a 3. And what we have optioned on this is the Performance Plus package, which includes uh, stiffer suspension, a little bit, or lowering of it, uh, bottom mold styling it's a little bit different if you can see let me show you it's a sport and there is a regular three and you can see it's just it's a little bit lower in comparison of course the wheels themselves are a lot different myself I'm a huge fan of these wheels again um, the car it's a Prius, and you're not going to be really sporty in a Prius, but, you know, if I could take these wheels off and put them on something else, I think that would be a great idea. I think the Prius should just have, you know, your standard wheels, because, I mean, who are you trying to kid? But honestly, in this color, everything looks good. Good charcoal wheel, I mean, good charcoal color with a uh, nice dark rim. There's the indication that the Plus Performance package is on there. So everything looks good. Right here we have the key, unlock, lock, and a good AC feature for where you're walking away or where you're walking up to your car. Hold down AC, car will beep, and while you walk with your groceries or whatever you have, the AC will start blasting up so you don't have to uh, blast it when you're inside the car. It saves you a little bit more energy because it I guess it pre-cools the car just a little bit. You know, on a warm day, you definitely want something like that. So you can hear the car currently, it's running. And that means it's powering the AC. And the reason why we have this is because we have the solar panel on here. Along with a uh, sunroof. Let me show you the sticker so we can get you all the crucial information. This one does have the plus performance package, which I mentioned. It does have the solar roof package, both for about 1,500 and 3,700 brown. And all this comes out to be 31,524. Of course, this gets you 50 combined city highway. City is 5148 for highway. So you're getting great gas mileage out of this car. And even if it does ride like a little boat, I assume that this Performance Plus will give it a little bit sturdier suspension, a little bit more of a car feel than a little boat feel. But I'm not going to be driving it right now, I'll be showing that later on just like the rest of the cars. So I'm going to unlock the doors, and we would go inside, the AC would turn off as soon as you open the doors, which is of course uh, good to know. On the door handle you do have a little rub button, let's say the door is open right now, you close it, and now you can't open the door. So that's a good little feature when you don't want to pull your key out. But right now we're going to unlock it, and I'm going to show you what's under the hood. So you can, the car is died, it's cooler in here, not entirely, you know, cold, but cooler than it would have been. So we're going to take a look under the hood. Now I've done reviews of the new Prius V, the C, which I have not put up yet, and the, um, what is it, the plug-in, the Prius Hybrid plug-in, which is a pretty nice one. And I equate it very much to the Vault, except, you know, a little bit different. So there's the Hybrid's Energy Drive. You do get a uh, eight-year warranty on everything on the Hybrid system in all hybrids from Toyota, including the, uh, well, the Camry Hybrid and the Highlander Hybrid. But there's everything here. All these fluids are going to last you about 100,000 miles or more. So everything is good. And of course these ones do have a 3 year 36,000 mile warranty. And uh, everything in the powertrain. Other than the, uh, the hybrid. It, it's a little bit complicated when you think about the, the Prius or any other hybrid. But for any other certain model you know, the warranty would be more specific to it. But 
Let me open the trunk. I've become a huge fan of hatchbacks, especially with that little TC which looks like a car but acts like a hatchback. So here's your hatchback space. You can put something tall in there like a uh, dresser or anything you'd like. And of course you can put the back seats down with a push of the button and a flick, they're out. And you have a lot more space to put your stuff in. And when your seat's back, you do have this nice cover to uh, not let your things get burnt and not let people see what you're carrying inside. Good little safety feature, good, you know, lots of cars have that. So I think it's definitely should be in here. So I'm gonna close it up. And let's take a look inside. Okay, so we're going inside, but before we do, I just want to mention that the doors on this car are extremely tinny, and I don't like that whatsoever. Here, what it sounds like when I close this door. Unlike the new Camry, which has a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, not weight to the door like the Avalon, but the Camry just sounds a lot better. But you just, you can hear it again. Tin. Must be, uh, I mean, it's probably just weight reduction. They don't need a lot of sound deadening materials. But you can even see here some sound deadening materials, but still it doesn't eliminate the fact that the door is light and full of hard plastics. So we're going to go inside here, have a gray cloth interior. You hear that tinniness again. Kind of soft materials here. No cushion whatsoever, just soft touch. No cushion for your arm, I don't like that. So we're gonna turn on the car because it's hot. Foot on the brake, don't have to put the key in anywhere, just press power and everything turns on. Move the seat up, remember this is a hybrid, so as of now the engine's not gonna be currently running, but it's gonna be running off the hybrid system. And now, because it's a little bit hot and it wants to turn on the AC, the engine just came on. So while we wait for things to load up, just to give you your basic information, you have your steering wheel, which feels kind of rough. It's a little bit soft touch, but could be a lot better. You have your radio controls, your Bluetooth phone controls, which all cars should have, and some more vehicle buttons over here, over here as well. Everything is as it should be. Nice little cup holder. Again, I don't know why they put a cover over it. It seems useless, because what are you going to put on top of here? You can't stick anything on top of here, because it's just going to be crushed and closed. But, that's what they do. And they have seemed to have wasted a lot of space here. They could put a little cubby for something. You know how I like my little cubby places for whatever. But they've wasted that space. Great job. Um, down here, your uh, charger. Good space for stuff, and this is a notification of the Plus Performance Package Lowering Spring Kit, saying that this vehicle has a very low approach angle and break over angle. A spring spacer has been installed to prevent body damage during transit. Take care while loading on the trailer, slow down for bumps and dips. And that's not only for people delivering the car, that's also for you. Just be careful when you drive this car, you don't want to scrape it up, because it is going to be a little bit lower than other Pre-I. Okay, top, again, I like the little space, the extra glove box. I guess we could start calling that something else. I haven't thought of anything interesting, though. And your bottom glove box, your space for a closed drink, and your armrest, which includes your another charger and your auxiliary and iPod USB connection. So that's all good. Taking a look at the screen. Um, being at my driving angle right here, the screen seems very dim and not washed out like the Corolla S, which had a horrible screen, but um, the rendering is not as nice as I thought it would be for a Pri Prius. Here's your navigation map. You have your new Entune uh, suite of apps from Toyota. You know, there's Bing, Pandora, you can also get iHeartRadio movie tickets, stock scores, sports scores, your map. And of course you can bing things, 
like where's the closest place to eat just you know no other useful questions while you're driving of course you have your radio controls over here let's turn it on it sounds pretty good in here and let's go through the audio sources you have AM, FM, satellite radio, and it does have HD radio, which I like. Sounds a lot clearer, clear. And Bluetooth for the phone, or Bluetooth streaming through the, you know, through the car. So your AC and your different drive modes right there: EV mode, Eco mode, and Power mode. You might as well not even have a Power mode because this is a Prius. Don't don't lie to yourself. It's a Prius. There is your useful parking brake with a light on it which indicates when the parking is on and when it is off so that's good I remember on the Volt there was no indicator other than up here or up on any kind of information section whether the uh, parking was on and I thought that was dangerous so everything looks good up here just taking a quick look at the little eyebrow Gives you more uh, hybrid system indications, your miles per hour, you know, and what gear you're in as well, and how much gas you have left. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move to the back seat. The seat is where it should be for when I drive. So we're gonna see what how much space I have, and I do have nice space. Close the tinny. Oh man, close those tinny doors. And. It's comfy back here, not anything special. I would have preferred the uh, synthetic leather, which weighs 50% less than most, than genuine leather, because it, it just makes the, comp the seating back here a lot better. This cloth is pretty average at best. But you do have your uh, both sides for your maps, your iPad, which is good, because I've seen other cars only have one side, and I think that's just ridiculous. And stupid and cheap to leave off but good space back here you have your little armrest which uh, to my gripe folds all the way down not stopping right here as it should of course you can put these seats down these are 60 40 seats I remember on the Avalon I haven't checked if it is I should have checked it I'm sorry but then you'd have more space back here and along with your solar solar panel which is above us here you have your sunroof so you can have both and I think that's a great idea I really love that AC feature with the uh, sunroof, and I like how you can collect more power through that. Beeping at me because I have the key outside of the car. We're going to turn the car off so it doesn't complain anymore. All in all, I think the uh, sport system for like 3000 and up dollars is extremely expensive, too expensive for this. I do like the wheels on it. It matches the color here nicely in comparison here is a regular... Prius but for that price it's not 100% not worth it don't get it get a regular one you know why you get a Prius you get it for the good gas mileage you don't get it to try to be something that's not as a sports car but I do suggest you get the solar roof package you have a sunroof and you have your solar panel on top that helps you with the AC and I believe that can be gotten on Prius 3 4 and 5's model and above so that's a very good thing to have. All right, so this has been Matt. If you have any questions, comments, find me here. I want to introduce everyone to WordPress, which I'll be using as my blog, so you'll be seeing more written reviews, more video reviews, more pictures, because I can do more than that. You know, just, I can do more than just videos like I'm doing on YouTube here. But I'll be setting everything up and hopefully get a lot more people coming and following me from that. So this has been Matt doing a review of the 2012 Prius, Toyota Prius, with the uh, Premium Plus uh, Sport Package. And I'll see you next time.